NASA's Inspector General just released an audit of the future of the ISS, and it looks like we're at T-minus nine years and counting until the end of the International Space Station. No, this isn't a rumor or speculation. I have the full 41-page report. Let's dive into all the details, including how the ISS will eventually be deorbited. Welcome back to the Launchpad. Zach here with another TLP News update. We're going to be covering a number of sections of this report. So in the description below and in your YouTube play bar, I've divided up the video into sections to make it a little easier to navigate. Early this morning, November 30th, 2021, the NASA Office of the Inspector General released a 41-page report breaking down NASA's management of the ISS and efforts to commercialize low-Earth orbit. Before we can fully understand these recommendations and why they are given, we need to understand why the audit was performed. For over 20 years now, NASA astronauts and partner astronauts have lived on the ISS orbiting 250 miles above the Earth. The ISS costs $3 billion U.S. a year, which equals to about a third of NASA's annual human spaceflight budget. Current plans were for the ISS to be retired in 2024, but with NASA focusing on returning to the Moon and eventually to Mars and no new station in orbit yet, the ISS needs an extension to 2030. The ISS was designed with a life expectancy of 15 years with a safety factor of 2, meaning it could last a total of 30 years after the first segments were launched in 1998. The Boeing Corporation, or Boeing, has certified the U.S. portion of the station's structure through 2028, which was 30 years. NASA is optimistic that the station's life can be extended an additional two years to 2030. However, the structure cannot endure the long-term effects of the harsh space environment forever. Ionizing radiation, extreme temperature changes, structural loading events such as docking and undocking of vehicles, and the hazards of micrometeorites and orbital debris all wear on the station's structure and will lead to the inevitable decommissioning and deorbiting of the ISS. In this audit, the Inspector General examined the costs associated with the station's continued use and maintenance, risks to the structure and NASA's utilization of the ISS, and the agency's plans for commercialization of low-Earth orbit, among many other things. Over the last decade, NASA has spent between 2 and $4 billion a year on the ISS, including operations, maintenance, research activities, and transportation costs. Operation costs are driven largely by the ISS's program's $19.6 billion 26-year contract with Boeing for sustaining engineering of the U.S. segment. This contract included the original design, development, testing, and evaluation of the station, as well as spares, subsystem management, modification, repairs, and life extension analysis. The research costs include the labor costs of staff at NASA and the Center for Advancement of Science, as well as space grants issued to outside researchers, and the multi-user system and support budget, which includes hardware, software, and mission integration and operation costs associated with conducting biological and physical science both on the ground and on the ISS. Transportation costs have fluctuated over time, but since 2014 have accounted for a majority of the station's costs. The main variable being transportation and which vehicles have been available to transport cargo, but more importantly, crew to the ISS. But that's a topic for another video. It's way too big of a topic. The ISS program office expects annual operation costs to remain stable at about $3.2 billion until the station ends its near end of life as NASA begins to spend less on repairs, equipment, and transportation. Many don't know, but the ISS was scheduled to retire in 2015 originally, but its life was extended by Congress through 2024 with further extensions now pending until 2030. But it's not just that congressional approval that is needed. Any extension of the operations past 2024 would require support from NASA's international partners whose continued participation hinges on issues that range from the state of the international politics to budget constraints and differing space exploration goals. Extending the life of the station beyond 2024 will also greatly depend on the structural integrity of the station itself as Boeing has certified the U.S. portions for only until 2028. NASA is optimistic they can stretch this to last until 2030, though. Recent events highlight some of the risks associated with the harsh environment, which would require continuous assessment of the station's operational performance. In 2019, NASA began tracking an atmospheric leak on station, which took until March 2021 to, for the crew to locate. Though the crew made a repair, a second leak is suspected, as there is still a slow depress detected. In May 2021, the Canada Arm 2 was also hit by orbital debris, puncturing a large hole through the main arm. Luckily, no major damage occurred, but it was an eye-opening experience for many. In January 2021, NASA reported the growing amount of orbital debris threatens the loss of all important space 
based applications and that work is needed to clean up space. And just then, two weeks ago, the Russian military performed that ASAT test, destroying an old Soviet satellite, creating hundreds of thousands of new pieces of debris, many of which will pass through the ISS orbit for over 20 years. Also this year, the ISS has lost control of its altitude control twice, which is a key for the station to be able to stay in a stable orbit to 2024 or to 2030, but is also a major part in how the station will be deorbited, but we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Understanding and mitigating risks to astronaut health and performance for long-duration space flights continue to be a top priority for the ISS. To track progress on mitigating health risks, NASA created the Integrated Path to Risk Reduction in 2014. The latest IPRR issued in June 2021 listed 16 outstanding human health risks that require mitigation, 12 of which require the ISS for testing. Each outstanding health risk relates specifically to long duration mission of 30 or more days or for long distance travel to the moon and Mars. After the ISS is retired, NASA plans to move this human health risk research onto alternative platforms such as commercial low earth orbit stations, commercial spaceflight missions to low Earth orbit in capsules, and onto stations near or bases on the surface of the Moon. The 12 mitigations NASA is currently testing will not be able to be completed by 2028 or 2030, as many of them have just begun and could take up to 2036 to actually be completed. NASA's current health risk reduction schedule pushes mitigation timelines for the deep space mission significantly farther into the future than previously planned. In 2018, the agency was on track to complete most of its ISS research uh, for, to enable deep space exploration by 2024. However, it was not until September 2020 when the agency issued its Artemis plan, outlining the programs, projects, and plans for the Artemis missions. Only then did NASA fully define human requirements for deep space exploration, including the location, duration, and types of activities that astronauts would be expected to perform. We dived into this when we first learned about the new spacesuits and that program, so check out that video where we dive into all the locations, including asteroids, Mars, and other moons. According to NASA, officials defining activities shifted the risk level and the time frame for mitigation of several human health risks, which extended the required research from 2024 into the 2030s. Currently, there are just two stations in orbit, the ISS and the China Station, but many new stations have been announced, which NASA is very excited about. Currently, NASA hopes to see one or more commercial space stations brought online and operational by 2028, which would allow a two-year overlap before the ISS would begin its retirement in 2030. NASA's plan for commercial low-Earth orbit development is comprehensive, and it's targeted most of the promising areas of the market's growth. NASA's market research studies found that most promising areas to stimulate demand included sponsorship and marketing, accommodations for space tourism, video products for entertainment use including films, documentaries, and sporting events, and in-space manufacturing of unique materials or products. In the last couple of years, we've started to see NASA begin testing and preparing the commercial sector for low-Earth orbit to become more available. In June 2019, NASA established a commercial and marketing pricing policy and expanded the commercial use of the station beyond activities that had previously been allowed on board. Over two years, 11 of 16 requests were approved, including an Adidas sneaker being tested and photographed in microgravity, Estee Lauder skincare products, marketing, photo shoot, and more. We've also seen private astronaut missions start to be announced to the ISS, with the first expected to dock in February 2022. We've also seen many more expressing interest to go to space, breaking records for the first time in over a decade as the world has started to look to the stars again, thanks to many of the high-profile events of Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin suborbital flights, and the historic Inspiration4 mission. In March 2021, NASA announced its commercial low-Earth orbit destination procurement strategy to fund a portion of the initial development costs and ultimately purchase services on one or more commercial low-Earth orbit stations. In the development phase, the strategy emphasized public-private partnerships similar to what the agency managed with the commercial crew program for Crew Dragon. Forty-nine commercial entities expressed interest in the initiative by attending an industry briefing in March 2021, and in August 2021, interested companies submitted their proposals to build their low-Earth orbit stations. NASA has also awarded a contract to Axiom Space for $140 million over seven years to build the Axiom Station. The first modules are expected to launch in late 2024 and will actually be docked to the ISS. 
This is the first time the ISS will be used like an orbital factory, having the Axiom station slowly built as almost like a new wing of the ISS. But then in 2028, Axiom will attach a module, but then in 2028, Axiom Space will attach its own power segment, and the station will detach and become its own free-flying station. The ISS has many ongoing experiments that could have major impacts on medicine, manufacturing, and more, and NASA is also looking to the future to make sure there is sustainable demand and also long-term needs for low-Earth orbit, as many more opportunities for working in the Moon and Mars open up in the coming decade. NASA has these big hopes and dreams of seeing multiple new stations come to low-Earth orbit, and the market interest for private astronaut missions has blown them away, but one thing that they are lacking is the budget to make this all happen. NASA requested $150 million a year from Congress for fiscal year 2019 through 2021 to fund the commercial low-Earth orbit development, but only received $40 million, $15 million, and then $17 million each of those three years. This funding supports more of the station's development, and it covers the five pillars of the agency's commercial low-Earth orbit and program management costs. NASA projects it will cost $300 to $400 million over a six-year period, so NASA has requested $845 million. Yeah, that's a big jump, I thought, too. $245 extra? Why not? This is going to be for fiscal year 2022 to 2026 to meet their 2028 goal of having a station able to replace the ISS. Now, onto what many of us have been wondering on how it would work for years, the retirement of the International Space Station. Would it be sold, split apart into other stations, with only a few modules deorbit? Let's dive into all the plans, costs, and timelines. With everything we have just gone through, it's, it's likely that within the next decade, NASA and its international partners will decide to decommission and deorbit the ISS, either because of its end of its useful life service, or in response to emergency. Yeah, I don't like the second half of that sentence either. The overall cost to deorbit the structure is estimated at $1 billion U.S. dollars and the plan is for the international partners to contribute to that cost. The final cost of each partner will be determined through negotiations and bartering. In the event of a planned deorbit, the station will begin gradually decreasing its altitude several years prior to re-entry. For example, using the hypothetical re-entry date of December 2030, the ISS would likely begin its degradation between November 2026 and April 2028, depending on atmospheric conditions that will affect the amount of drag on the station. NASA expects that current ISS fuel and oxidizer tanks will be sufficient to provide the propellant required to perform the planned targeted re-entry, targeting the South Pacific. In the event of an emergency in which the ISS cannot be recovered after experiencing a critical anomaly or devastating micrometeorite or orbital debris strike, the deorbit time frame would shrink to approximately six months. In both planned and emergency deorbit scenarios, towards the end of the deorbit maneuver, Mission Control Moscow will attempt a controlled destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere where the station will use its thrusters to position the spacecraft at a steep angle to confine the debris field to a targeted area. Starting in 2022, the ISS will have its reboosts performed by Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo resupply spacecrafts to ensure the ISS maintains enough propellant reserves on station for a deorbit burn when required. So what does all of this mean? I know there's a lot there. The ISS has less than 10 years left in its life. Commercial space exploration and habitation will be our future, and there are a lot of risks for further human exploration to the Moon and Mars, but research is underway to protect those future astronauts and space tourists. There are many different plans underway for new stations, and over the next couple of years, hopefully all of this uncertainty and not clear information of who will do what will actually become clear, and we'll get to know what the next decade and the future of Low Earth Orbit will look like. I want to hear from you in the comments, though. What do you think about the ISS being retired? Do you think we'll see multiple stations up in orbit and operational in time? Share your thoughts, positive or negative, we want to hear them. Make sure to never miss another TLP News update by engaging that subscribe button, and we are super excited to announce our brand new weekly show, The Launch Pod, will be lifting off on January 6, 2022. During the show, we'll break down the top stories of the week, look forward to upcoming launches, hearing, Starbase testing, and more. But most importantly, we're going to break down your guys' comments, questions, topics, and theories live. Stay tuned for more information. But that's all for this TLP News update. This is Zach, signing off.